you know, a lot of these okay. these people anyway. But things escalated, the numbers. We only went in to help a couple of families. Then we intended to come out. The sheer numbers mm -hmm. that we went, we actually fa found uh, in one meeting in Jalalabad, went into meetings that maybe four to eight people might want our help. Turns out that there were 74 British passport holders and nationals stranded in just that one town. That must have been so, so that's awful, isn't it? I mean, it's yeah. very difficult very to fun. turn down help. When people have got young children and have got a British passport, it's very difficult to say no to anybody. So we tried to help as many as what, as what we could. There's the cute little children, the little eyes, and you want to help them all and get them out of there. Well, yeah, ex exactly. Yeah. yeah, that must have been, it must have been very tough. So you're doing this mission, you're trying to get these people out. Yeah. And then what happens? How, how is it that you become to become captured yourself? I was actually in Kabul for three months. So then in December last year, we were looking at a property. It was the former British ambassador's residence, mm -hmm. which was owned by a local Afghan that, that was renting it. So we thought we might want to rent that as our property. While we were there, we were approached by a group of armed Taliban, asked what we, would, what we were doing here. We showed them our identification, our passport, entry visas. We even had a letter, official letter, from the Afghan gov government, one of the ministers, Mm -hmm. saying that, that we were OK to be in Afghanistan. We were then asked to be a company, to accompany the members of the Taliban to the Afghan intelligence headquarters to answer a couple of questions. We said, not, not a problem. We're not here to cause any issues. We will answer any of your questions. So we went voluntarily to their headquarters. We were put in a holding cell. We thought it might take a couple of hours to, um, to confirm who we are, that our, our identification is real. 190 days we were actually kept in an underground Taliban interrogation centre. Really? And what did they do to you there? They just, did, did they talk to you? Did they, what did they do? I'm going to be very careful how I actually word this. Um, the first two weeks I was there, they did not know who I actually what, who, who I was. Then after the two-week point, they d discovered I was a former British soldier. And the person interrogating us, that particular member of the Taliban, had had a running in southern Afghanistan with the British Army. So he had a personal grudge against pretty much anything that, that was actually from the West, particularly the British Armed Forces. As soon as you found out I was an ex-power, obviously it got a bit interesting at that point. Um, yes, I was ill-treated and beaten by this particular individual. He whipped my, my fate and... I picked up a lot of other injuries, including six cracked ribs as well. And Nicky, you must have been really worried about him. He's out there. Did, was he able to get word back to you? We had, um, after a while, we had an occasional phone call, didn't we? It was about five minutes, um, but it, there were not personal phone calls. They were very public. We were very aware that all the, the guards were listening in, and so you, you couldn't sort of have a private personal conversation. It was literally just confirmation he was still alive really so yeah mm. it was hard. he must have been d desperate really with worry it was he was there extremely so and, and because we were trying to, we literally couldn't tell very many people at all so I was having to put my lipstick on and carry on each day without people knowing what was really going on because we had to keep it private you know to keep him safe so yeah it was it was hard and how did you eventually get out of there well, there was six British nationals originally that, that were taken off the street and one American. When we got released, there was only five British nationals left, so we all got released at the same time. What, what happened to the sixth one? The, he was actually released about a month be, 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 before us. Um, the, the, the other five, after a lot of hard work by the British Foreign Office mm -hmm. and seven other countries helped to get us out as well by speaking to the Taliban. Then we were taken to the actual airport where I personally received my passport back, my watch and some other personal things. No one else received their passports or anything, which again we found was unusual. Mm -hmm. But the, the, what I was told by the foreign affairs, um, someone senior from the Taliban, I got my watch and passport back as a sign of respect from one soldier to another. Wow. I thought that was unusual. Um, I also shook the hand of one of the guys who tortured me, a young guy on the way out, 
one of the Taliban. And I said, I don't have a problem with him or what he, was, what he did to me because he was following orders and he would have had it done to him if he didn't torture me. Um, and